welcome along to our live with the fabulous Megan Pinozo. So I've got <laughs> Megan over here. Hi. <laughs> now, thanks everyone for coming along. We've got an awesome, awesome chat today. So um, for a wee bit of background on Megan, I'll just, Megan, if you say hi and give a wave, you'll pop up on the... Hello. No. <laughs> There's Megan in all her glory with uh, the most fabulous glasses and haircut right now. Love. Um, I coloured my hair yesterday. Did you? I was going to say it looks very fresh. <laughs> yeah, really. That's not locked. Like, I'm like, that's not your usual lockdown. <laughs> lockdown <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, um, for those of you who are meeting Megan for the first time, so Megan is the owner of a salon called In Awe, and the salon is down in Adelaide. So unfortunately, they have just gone into a bit of a lockdown as well. So there's quite a few of us in a pretty similar situation through Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia. Um, Megan is a fabulous educator, an award-winning hairdresser, um, colour expert, as we can see through <laughs> that right there. <laughs> And recently, Megan's also been announced as um, the ambassador for Varus. Varus? Yes. Varus, yeah. Saying that correctly. And has also launched or is the founder of Unity Hair Education Collaboration. So there's a lot of things that are going on in the world of um, yours at the moment, Megan. And yeah. <laughs> today, though, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a different um, topic that we've got you on for. So Megan also has a background in mental health and um, psychology and so we have asked her to come on today to talk to us a wee bit about mental wellness and um, keeping your mind nice and healthy through a time that is pretty challenging. So um, what I would really like all of you to do is to please fire through some, some questions and some comments and let us know um, what you've been going through at the moment. And I can, if you've got anything that you'd like to ask Megan, um, I can feed those question, questions through and we can have a really nice conversation together. Um, yeah, cool. So welcome, Megan. Yay. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice to get you to get you back on our platform. It's um been a hot little minute, but time has flown <laughs> since the last one. Yeah, it was like it's if really funny. Like I've been sort of, you know, obviously listening to the news and stuff, and they're like, oh, you know, when this all started like 18 months ago, and it's like far out, as if we're 18 months I, in, like feels like yesterday and forever ago that this started. Yeah. yeah. It was um last Easter as I was looking back. It was East, it was, I'm pretty sure it was like Easter weekend that we caught up, which is. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, know, Far out. I know, I know. It's, yeah, time really has um, flown by. And I think a lot of what, ha what has made that go so fast is obviously spending so much time um, in doing the same thing day in, day out, mm -hmm. um, which is a funny, it's a funny place to be in at the moment. Um, how are you, how are you doing at the moment? How are you feeling with everything that's going on? Um, okay, so I feel like I have to like preface this and say, first of all, like I'm in Adelaide. So, you know, like I have been really fortunate. And so, um, you know, I think that anybody in Victoria um, has been slaying this literally for the past <laughs> 18 months. And so, um, you know, what What I have to add to this, like I do have something to add to this conversation definitely, but, um, you know, my heart like just goes out to all of you guys in Melbourne in particular oh, because you've been you. doing this for so long and, yeah, like I think sometimes, you know, it's really hard to see the forest for the trees and when you're in it, you're like, how are we going to get mm. through this? But, you know, we all come out at the other yeah. end of these things eventually and then you look back and you think oh, I didn't think I could do it but I did yeah so yeah yeah so keep on keeping on oh thank you for the way the way shout out I think um yeah it's nice to it's really it really feels lovely when there are other it's almost this we state we've got these relationships between states yeah <laughs> and it really does feel lovely when there's uh when you recognize what I think Victoria has been through um so yeah so let me just have a look who we've got here cool 
Awesome. Nice week, crew. So um, talking about, actually, maybe we'll just start off with the, so you've got a wee bit of a background in that mental health space. What was the, yeah. where, when did so, that, tell us about um, that. When did I do that? So before I bought my salon, I actually, I hurt my shoulder and I thought I was going to have to give up hairdressing. And so I was like, okay, what would I do if I wasn't a hairdresser? And I was like, well, I'd be a counsellor because <laughs> I'm yeah. already doing and it. It's so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so I, I was still working in a salon, but I took myself off to TAFE and I did a cert for in community um, counselling. And, um, yeah, so, you know, it really did give me a, a pretty good understanding of, you know, how to communicate with my clients in an effective manner when, you know, they're going through something or even just really understanding things like body language and communication yeah. and nonverbal communication and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so I think being a hairdresser, like we wear so many different hats mm. and I, it's, you know, I something that I'm really passionate about is actually teaching hairdressers how to communicate in that sense um yeah because I think that you know we go to trade school and we learn how to do hair but we don't learn the most important thing and that's really truly how to effectively communicate with people yeah yeah so which is you know the most important part of our job and I'm sure you eventually find your way navigating this sort of curvy path into where you I know so many of you that I've spoken to um you know it, you can tell that you've really found a way to connect with people to relate with people and because you've done it for so many years yeah. but coming in fresh and then dealing with a lot of that I can imagine um is tough puts people yeah, in some, totally yeah yeah totally and you know like I think as well like in with having that connection I think it's something that um we as hairdressers during a lockdown really struggle with because yeah. I think more often than not we actually get our energy from others yeah. and um you know so when we're not vibing in a room with a whole heap of other people it's sort of sometimes it feels a little bit like who am I yeah and yeah I know that certainly for myself with our first lockdown because we um, my salon was closed for four and a half weeks then and that was the thing that really kind of shook me a bit was yeah. just not being around people yeah so so um did you yeah what <laughs> did you do anything in particular to sort of find that connection in other ways as you were at home I mean it can and it's quite challenging at times also you don't want to be on the screen too much you know there's all these zoom meetings and yeah I know it but can be you know like but- I think at sometimes as well like last night I caught up with a couple of my girlfriends who like we the three of us are like the best of friends but our lives are all really busy you know yeah. they've both got small children I don't have small children but my business is my small child yes. and um <laughs> you know and so we find it really hard to connect and like actually yeah. find the time to get together so last night we just had a few wines on, on the Zoom? messenger chat oh, yeah messenger chat. and it was That's awesome so and we were just like okay you know what if we can't get together let's just do this more often because yeah. like yeah. you know even out is, of the situation that we're in yeah totally because it is an opportunity for us to catch up and and be together yeah. and you know it's hard not kind of being within that physical sort of energy space of people but um I think we just need to do what we can to connect yeah and did you feel great after oh my god it was so good it was so good we all had a few wines we all messaged each other this morning we're like a bit dusty (laughs) (laughs) totally and even though it's sure it might not be like for like but there is still absolutely it stirs up those feelings those endorphins that you get from having those connections with your close friends and feeling supported and connected to one another I think is really ultimately whatever channel you're doing it through if it can help towards that then perfect brilliant yeah um I've got I thought I were I've got a couple of wee questions and um to everyone that's listening to this conversation right now yeah throw them through I'll keep an eye out um Megan do you have any like if we're talking about um obviously there's a lot of 
different things that this can stir up for one another and everyone's having a different experience through what we're going through but um anything to share on what might be normal to or you know what um what sort of emotions might be coming up which people aren't used to and just sort of um some insight into what feelings might be coming up for people while they're stuck in this uncertainty and this strange wee time yeah well I think overwhelm is probably you know yeah the first and probably most dominant feeling definitely Mm -hmm. um you know and I think like when it comes to overwhelm I think all you can do is just take small steps you know like just create a list for yourself you know wake up and just be like you know I've like I wrote some stuff down so you know like um just each day do something it doesn't need to be all day it just needs to be one thing so it could be exercise <clears throat> like I was saying to you earlier Lou I normally exercise quite a lot and normally do like an hour to an hour and a half a day I normally wake up at quarter to five in the morning as well I'm not doing Ooh. that at the moment <laughs> I'm kind of acting like I'm on holidays to be honest um but you know like I've just I haven't been exercising that much but I've given myself half an hour every day Mm. so I'm like you know what I did it I did half an hour um you know it could be anything it could be make a video for your social media like just do something um and then connect so you know um you could start a book club with some friends and then you could be doing something by reading a book and also connecting with people via book club. Yeah, um, love that. Yeah. Um, share a cooking class. Yeah, like a virtual cooking yeah, class? Yeah, like do a virtual cooking class with your friends. Oh, great idea. Something yeah. to also, I think, the thing that I personally found through Victoria's long stretch of lockdown that... Um, the zooms where you're you know the zooms where you'd sort of just get on the zoom call with your friends and sit down like sometimes we would try and do them on Fridays they were really really great at the start but I um I did start to get kind of itchy in them after a while so being able to mix it up and we've all been obviously going through this for a while now but being able to mix it up with things like that is such a good idea yeah where it's like let's actually do something together I yeah even had a friend who watched a movie with a friend the other day by pressing play on Netflix (laughs) at the same time (laughs) exactly so you know you can like there's definitely those things um last night I was chatting to my one of my girlfriends and we were talking about giving up smoking and um so I gave up smoking nearly 12 years ago and yeah and when I gave up smoking I um I decided that I was going to do a cold turkey but to do it like that, then I had to be mentally prepared for what that meant. Um, And so it was recognising my rituals. So Mm. the things that I would always do when I would have a cigarette. So I was talking on the phone, Mm. getting in my car, straight after a meal, you know, and that kind of thing. So instead of having a cigarette, I would have a lollipop because it was hand to right? So my hand was still sort of moving towards my mouth. Yeah. But then when it came to the boredom cigarettes, I actually got my husband's nan to teach me to knit. Oh. So the reason that I did that is because learning something new creates new neural pathways in your brain. Mm-hmm. So um, you can teach yourself something new. So if you are feeling this overwhelm at the moment, then do something new. Like, mm do something where you can create a new neural pathway in your brain that actually gives you some serotonin and makes you feel good about yourself so that you are kind of creating those opportunities to have some happy hormones in your body without you know things like drugs or alcohol or anything like that because um yeah it helps to grow your brain that is such, also move that through is it. such a great tip that it's actually the action of doing something new that can stimulate some of those um, chemicals being released in your brain. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've actually heard as well um, in some of my research over the years that if you um, are feel, feeling like you are having a panic attack coming on, um, go and brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand. Ah. Oh. Right. Wow. So because you're again, you're creating that neural pathway yeah. to something different. So um, your brain is then triggered 
to learn yeah um and to adapt rather than to then move into that so clever as well because thinking what can I do new what can I do but the fact that in the moment if you need something brushing your teeth with your non-dominant brush your teeth with your opposite hand like literally it's that simple yeah yeah Oh, awesome. Not that to is say that people spend too you. But, you know, it's just those little things in those moments. If you are feeling overwhelmed, then do something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know um, just before when we were having a wee conversation before jumping on the live, how we had that um, wee combo just about how the first time around that we may have all been in this situation, really active, like trying all the, you know, um I myself I think bought all the trending sort of like paint by numbers and all the things and I was being quite active whereas this time around it definitely feels a little different and I don't quite have that same motivation and I think a lot of people are experiencing that and there's a bit of guilt that um comes with that like oh, I'm at home I've got this time all of a sudden when usually my life is so busy why aren't I making the most of it? I've got all these things that I know I have on my to-do list. Why am I not feeling, why am I not getting up and doing all these? And yeah, do you have any sort of advice for people on how to um, manage that? Yeah. Um, so I was saying to you before, during our first lockdown, when the salon was closed, I really bullied myself. Like I really, I, even when I was not motivated or didn't even really have anything to do, I made myself sit in my office at my computer and look through our appointment book or look mm. through the figures and, you know, like just I really, I really did mm. lead myself into being productive. And I, yeah. actually there were times that I was really productive, but there's also times that I wasn't. And so for me this time and, um, I have, yeah, I've decided that I'm not going to do that because I think, you know, resting is doing. Like sometimes yes. your body and your brain actually needs the time to just switch off yeah. and, you know, and not engage in the external. You are so right. Resting is doing. I think that is such a key thing and almost worth repeating. Resting is doing. Resting is doing. And it almost is the opposite to what we're used to in yeah. society the it's an opposite message but you are so so right yeah. and if this is a pocket of time that we've got to be able to do that use it to to spend a bit of time nurturing nurturing yourself yes. recharging yeah Definitely. yeah I think yeah I've kind of <clears throat> I've gone into this lockdown kind of thinking okay I'm just gonna give myself some time and like I well TikTok's diagnosed with me with ADHD so um <laughs> that's brilliant though that is such so, you know do you know that's one thing that I haven't actually been doing too much of like I haven't been getting on TikTok for ages or just scrolling online heaps like I feel like I don't know I don't even, I don't even really know what I've been doing or much of, but I've so been okay making too. sure yeah. I haven't been kind of and the other thing that I haven't done as well or that I have done is I've removed people from my social media who are not good for my mental health. Mm, a bit of a cleanse, like a detox yeah. of, of yeah, totally. the social people you're following. And, you know, they, yeah, it doesn't need to be a big announcement. Some people just need to be hidden yeah. on Facebook Which, or whatever. Yes, where you can hide yeah. without needing to remove and yeah. actually start to create or, um, yeah, create a feed that makes you feel good. Where yeah, con exactly. the content is actually going to serve a purpose. It's got value for you. Yeah. 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 That's so, awesome. Yeah. I think that's really important at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Great um, tips. I think very practical one to do that social, social one. Mm -hmm. A bit of time invested into it and can really make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I've also got a wee question for you around. So, um, this one came through just before the live from someone that I that was going to tune in. Um, they were asking about so with their their staff members when they're let's say when they're reaching out to their staff and their staff um, respond with a type of message that really is is screaming out that they're not doing that well, they're not so okay. Do you have any insights for people on how as a manager or as a um, boss on how to respond to um someone or their you know to how to look after their teammates when they um say that they're not actually doing so well 
Yeah. I suppose, you know, like it's important to just really stay connected. So mm. make sure, you know, daily you're picking up the phone and speaking. Don't don't text. Mm. Like try and speak. Nice. Um, because I think, you know, unfortunately a lot of the time we text and, you know, emotion Hidden. isn't conveyed through text. So, um, yeah. so yeah, I think it's really important to get on and speak. Um, I, yeah, you know, like we have been sort of catching up on Zoom just once a day, just, you know, 20 minutes just hey how are you going we've all had a laugh and you know like I think that it's really important as a business owner and a leader to make sure that you're still connecting with your team and your culture mm. and you know so um yeah just doing what you can around culture and then you know like if you are really concerned um reach out to family yeah and, of, of the of your employees yeah definitely and you know I think if um you know if it really is necessary then maybe a visit yeah actually yeah. needs to be done <clears throat> I think you're bang on on the making sure that you're present with your team to be able to pick up on some of those things and so yeah. true that we we hide so much through um or, or emotion can't be conveyed as clearly mm -hmm. message to the top you miss you lose all the tone of voice and something could come across as like yeah, I'm good. Or yeah, I'm yeah. good. Like, it's there's, just... um, there's actually a, there's a key and pill, you know, the comedians, key and pill. There's um, a key and pill skit about text messages. <laughs> I suggest that you all go and watch it because it is brilliant. Can we please? Brilliant. I'll grab the link from you after this and share it in the comments for everyone yeah, to cool. be able to have a little watch. <laughs> nice. That's great. Um, yeah, awesome. So, so yes, phone calls over text that checking in and how about when you just mentioned around, um, nurturing the culture of your team, is there anything specifically that you've been doing there, um, to keep that sort of alive? Um, so yeah, so we've been like connecting every day. So I've just said to the guys, like, you know, I mean, I can't expect them to be educating all day, every day. And, yeah. you know, because they're going through this as well and they don't exist in an inner vacuum. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I need to accept that they're going to be ebbing and flowing as well. But if we can just connect once a day and just be who we are, mm. you know, um, I am obsessed with my team. I mm. absolutely adore them. And, you know, so I want to just check in with them a so that I can make sure that they're all doing okay but b as well you know because I miss them and yeah. I want to share energy with them as much as possible so um yeah so I think you know if that culture is there that culture mm. can survive mm. yeah, yeah yeah absolutely um and then how about so you talked away I think that the tips you shared before about just doing one thing a day one yep. you've got one thing to, whether it's half an hour exercise whatever it is that's brilliant yeah um and oh, I guess sort of in line with that probably the exercise is something that helps there but if you do find yourself um or for people that might be feeling like they're waking up they're just in a bit of a mood feeling quite flat static really um just a bit you know like lethargic mm -hmm. what what sort of things could would be great we um activities to to go and do or what sort of actions um breathing exercises thing anything well, you like know, that? that's that's the thing you just like uh, that's the thing I was just thinking like if you really don't want to do anything just focus on your breathing yeah. like literally just you know I pulled I must have pulled that you, yeah it was in the creative <laughs> consciousness definitely you know like fill your lungs up from the bottom to the top and then let them go in the same way you know so that you're just fully focused on your breathing for one minute like mm. that's that is all you need to do for a day yeah and um I actually was having a conversation with a friend the other day about boredom and feeling sometimes you know when you are at home and you've sort of done all the things that you want to do and sitting there when you're bored and we have such a tendency to go and pick up our devices mm -hmm. and just fill that fill that space fill that space yeah. whereas well, really the dopamine here right 
yeah and it, it but it leaves you feel it's such a quick fix and it leaves mm. you feeling terrible after um especially when you have a feed that might not be filled with the most healthy things mm-hmm. yeah um and the conversation we were having was why 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 can't you sit with the boredom can you just allow yourself to sit with that for a minute even like five, five minutes and just see yeah. what comes up instead yeah. of the constant filling of things and maybe it's the minute of breathing and just see if where that if where that, leads where that you. takes you yeah maybe yeah. something will come up you know I kind of I think about I don't know you know because I'm just on the cusp of Gen X and millennial I think they yeah. call us millennials <laughs> now um and so you know I grew up without internet and yeah. you know and so it was like mom I'm bored so she be like well go and make some fun and you know so I kind of like obviously I was a kid so it's a bit different but you know like I think of the things that I would do as a young person and I'm like you know let's do that so you know create creative yeah creativity really it's it like gives it space to be born it does yeah it does and that's not to say that you're always going to feel like you're being creative out of boredom sometimes yeah yeah (laughs) but you know that's where that learning something new comes in and you know like do something different so if you're bored do something you don't normally do Mm. Mm. um so yeah awesome like the thing is you know maybe you give yourself like an hour every day to go on the internet but remove all of the social media apps off of your phone yeah you know so actually go to websites where you can learn something yeah yeah so I've actually um I have sent you a link Lou um to a really good resource that I found on Curtin University awesome um and yeah so they've got some really cool um like apps and um books and all sorts of different um resources on there where you can kind of you know um find I'll things share. yeah mindfulness resources i will share that in the um comments right now for everyone so that you can have a wee look through some of those. Yeah, that's awesome because sometimes it's even just <coughs> needing a little bit of um, inspiration on what's out there, some new things mm-hmm. to try, giving them a yeah. crack and maybe one will become a fabulous new, you know, wee, wee hobby. I feel like, it, yeah, it's, it is, um, it can be very enjoyable and frustrating <laughs> learning something new, but awesome, awesome to know that that's actually doing something for us mentally and yeah, keeping yeah. us well there. And there's a lot of uh, people that I know there's a lot of services like exercise, uh, whether it's PTs or yoga instructors and things that are starting to offer on with lockdown, offer their services online and a lot of it for free. Um, So that's another awesome way thing if it's that, if that might be the one thing. Yeah. 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 Um, That's, you know, and like focus on one thing, learn how to do a really good downward dog or. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like you know learn how to do one thing really really well yeah yeah awesome totally downward dog if you need any tips everyone hit me up <laughs> lose <your> girl <laughs> um we've also just had a wee um message come in from Fatima if your staff talk to you really formal in a way like you are not like feeling like um, they're talking to you saying oh you're not looking after me and it's that they're, they're coming across very formal mm-hmm. um do you how would what would be a good response to I think that? you just need to have really open communication with your team and just yeah. you know and find out what it is that they're struggling with um what you could be doing better because you know like as employers like you know we like our leadership is the most important thing in the business like and it but our leadership needs to come from kindness and so um you know we need to be open to criticism Mm. and we need to be open to um changing the way that we do things to create great environments for our staff members because our businesses are only as good as the people that work in them yeah so you know like if we're if we're in need of an attitude adjustment 
then we need to be open to that as well. Yeah, I think important message to message to share there. And the, um, from Fatima also shared asked around when you talked about connecting with your staff every day, does it need mm -hmm. to be a phone call or is it okay if, because if you've got a lot of staff, you know, is that touch point in a different way okay as yeah, well? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we've been doing a Zoom just like jumping awesome. on messenger or whatever yeah. um but you know like i'm also in contact constantly with my team via different channels we actually laugh because tiktok is my love language so <laughs> <laughs> i just send them funny videos like stuff that yeah. just i know is going to make them laugh yeah. and um so awesome. yeah you know like just just reach out and connect in any way possible send them i love you yeah, you know, and quite like, a nice way to break some of that maybe formality through some funny wee videos and things being like, hey, I'm thinking yeah, of you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like I think it's really important to understand and definitely I think for you guys in Melbourne as well is that, you know, um, like people are probably scared about their jobs and, you know, like it's – you know the those hierarchy of needs so can I can I pay for my my accommodation and my food mm. like mm. you know first and foremost and if I can't do that then maybe I'm gonna lash out at the first person in the chain of response yeah. for that and that's gonna be their employer so you know like how can we as employers make them feel safe um and let them know that we're going to do what we can to support them. And I, you know, like having said that, it's important for us to be able to pay our staff's wages, but, you know, that money has to come from somewhere. So, yeah. um, you know, I don't know. I think maybe it's about having a really open and honest conversation about, you know, um, how a business is run and mm. where the money comes from and how we can all work together to make it better together. Mm, helping to give a bit of clarity on what the situation is also for right. you as the owner yeah. potentially so that yeah. there's empathy from both sides yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh well honestly the the conversation today I think is one that um is really has really been needed for what people are going through and um for all of you that are out there listening I hope that this conversation um doesn't end here so if you've got questions at all for us, pop them in. We will make sure that we stay in contact with Megan um, so we can share those through. But yeah, Megan, your tips are, are so helpful and practical, which I think is something that um, is really helpful through this time for people. So thank you so much for coming on today. It's, it's been a pleasure to talk to you and to get you on and you're just such a ball of sunshine. So it's lovely. It's really Thanks lovely. Thanks for having me and um, just be kind to yourselves, guys. Yeah. That's all we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that is it. Is there anything else from you? Should we wrap it up? Yeah. Let's wrap it up. Awesome. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in and we'll see you soon. Cool. Yeah. Bye.